Welcome to David's World of Obscure Lighting Experiments. I uh, suggest you make yourself a nice hot cup of coffee and uh, warm up that thinking cap because it's going to require a bit of uh, pondering this one. OK, I'll describe to you what you're looking at. This is a scene, an angular map that I've generated in Bryce. It's HDRI and what I've done is I've used HDR Shop to multiply up the pixel values of these light areas. Obviously this is supposed to look like three windows and we're closest to the middle window so the rest of the room's unlit and uh, in the bottom corner here there's a little report that's provided by HDR Shop which uh, what the pixel values are. So all this area is fully black as you can see red, green, blue and uh, these values have been multiplied up to provide a tremendous amount of light. So what we're going to do is use this light probe in Bryce to investigate some of the issues with uh, with the true ambience rendering method when you've got very bright light sources like this and then we'll move on to colored light sources and then we'll hopefully move on to a potential solution which uh, which I find quite interesting but could be quite boring for some people so if you're the sort of person that gets easily bored by um, lighting solutions you probably better stop watching now because I'm going to go on about it quite a lot. So in Bryce, that's sky and fog, light lab, image based lighting tab, use HDRI image, open and that's for later. We'll get our first angular map. So this is our light probe. You can see that's what we're looking at in HDR shop and I'm going to add it to the background. I'm going to turn down the quality and we'll just start with this as it as it comes in and bear in mind when you load a uh, HDR image you do get Trambian's optimization set automatically so even if you've unset that when you load another image in it'll reset it it's something to bear in mind so at the moment we'll be in regular rendering mode but not for long so I'm going to switch to atmosphere off and to start with I'm going to set the atmosphere to fully black we we'll just give this a quick render, you'll see the situation we're in. <laughs> you can see that this uh, background's not a very high resolution one, but uh, we're only going to use it for looking at reflection, so that doesn't really matter. I'm going to create a default Bryce sphere. I'm going to modify the material and give it 15 reflections. This is a very basic material then, just slightly reflective material. I'm going to move the camera around and I'm uh, just going to get it so we've got the reflections coming in from one side. So if I render this now, we've got a lot of light. So um, I'll correct for that. We'll go into the premium effects, true ambience. I'll leave it at 64 rays and we'll use a scattering correction to start with and maximum ray depth of 4. And we'll render that and suddenly we find we've not got that much light at all. So there you can see our reflection on this object and to improve render performance I'm going to change the aspect ratio of this scene and then I'm going to zoom the camera a bit so we get a closer look at our subject here. So here's our subject and now we're using a true ambience method to light the scene and there's not that much light being provided and this is because in the unboost lighted situation so oh, here we go we haven't got boost light selected then there's a cap on the amount of light being generated and if you uncap the light from the HDR backdrop which we'll do that now by applying boost light you'll see we run into a different problem even though we're on 64 rays per pixel it's generating a lot of noise now what I'm particularly interested in this um, lighting environment and it's a particular challenge is that I've got three very bright light sources so I'm expecting to see a bias of light in the direction of those light sources which to be fair I am seeing but I'm also seeing a lot of noise which is going to spoil my render and unless I was to do something like render this at a very high resolution which would take a long time even for a simple scene then and scale it back down in something like PaintShop Pro I might lose the noise then but it'd be better if I could find a way of losing the noise in Bryce so well, the most rays per pixel I can select is 256 and uh, well, let's have a look at the render time so that's three minutes for this very simple scene it's only got two objects in and uh, if I pick an area out too much noise too much noise for this render resolution so therein lies the problem what I want to do 
is create a fairly low noise environment but still have this kind of um, bias of light in in one direction so that uh, that you can see that the light's being provided so what uh, potential solutions are there well we could use a gel light as I have been doing and this will sort of lead to the solution that I'm looking for and I edit that light and uh, first of all I need to prevent the the light arriving from the backdrop so use gel and include in the background this means that if it's including only the background the diffuse will not have any effect into procedural and I'm just going to stop the trambient light arriving now so we've got no light now okay and then I'm going to create another light source here and edit that and I'm going to do trambient optimization use gel include background in the procedural I'm going to use the ambient channel and then you're going to use a picture and I'm going to use a spherical map of the the, the windows background which uh, I'll need to spherically map there because it automatically resets to sinusoidal and give it ambient output so that's going to provide me with an output in, in a position so that should be aligned with the background because I've not rotated the HDR image and if we now enlarge that sphere so it encapsulates the scene with any look it'll provide some light just not a lot and so I'm going to increase the global ambient to a full value still not seeing very much light I'll copy and paste it so I've, I've, I've doubled my gel lighting output you can see it's already started to slow the render engine down I'm still not seeing very much light out of this which is uh, frankly inconvenient slowing it down still further and still not in a flight essentially if we look in here the problem is that too much of this image is dark and so unless you can you can provide a full channel but then that will give us general lighting just not very much and I wonder why that is it's starting to suspect that something's gone wrong here <laughs> as, as I often do right let's just check that we are producing light with these so um, I'll just make sure that they're all set to produce ambient light so okay where's my light gone <laughs> should be there somewhere Trambians use gel procedural include background and oh normal thank you right I was beginning to get a bit suspicious there right okay so back to where we were I'll edit all these together and I'll give it the picture value that I had before so we can actually see it's producing an output now even though it's producing an output you can see there's hardly any light which is why I was confused before so we'll make mistakes anyway this is not the solution as it stands because we stack the gels up they can see a bit of light we can copy and paste and make more gels so they've got all these extra transparent layers we're going to have to add so many gels the render time is going to become enormous we'd have to increase uh, the maximum ray depth to allow it to transfer through each transparent layer uh, to pick up the next layer to provide more light and even then with boost light we're just not getting enough light through this approach so what we need to do is have another way of lighting the gel light that allows us to control the light level because as things stand we don't uh, we don't have a way that produces enough light that does that and also doesn't produce a lot of noise which is the essence of this problem with these very essentially small light sources compared with the rest of the lighting environment okay right a minor detour now so what we're going to look at is an, another feature in the HDRI tab that allows us to um, light from the inside which I've not really found a lot of use for until now so I've made another HDRI image so I'm going to open that one and that looks like this I'm going to add it to the sky and we'll just uh, render it as it is without the ground plane. So
So I made a cube in Wings 3D and then following the tutorial on BrassTutorials.com there is a little uh, Wings 3D tutorial that allows you to do UV mapping and I've UV mapped um, onto the faces of a cube different colours so I've got front and uh, right and left. I'm just going to have to turn the atmosphere off here and I want to get rid of the sun so we don't, we don't want the sunlight we don't really need much light at the moment. We've got down, so they're all, all different colours and have got different letters on them. And this is just going to help me orientate uh, things. And I'm going to create a single sphere and enlarge that so it encompasses the camera. And of course now we've got rid of the the light probe. No light can get inside this sphere. Back into the Skylab image-based lighting, we can switch to light from the inside. I'll use render in scene and increase the amount of lighting and you can see what the result is when we're lighting from the inside now. So here we have the inside of the sphere. I'm going to widen the field of view to give you some impression and you can see that it is lit sort of generally speaking according to the faces. So if, if, I, if I get this sphere now and I'll just make it uh, I'll make it transparent so we can see the backdrop through it. So there's the green area and it's got a sort of faded green blob and the red area's got a red blob and uh, just roughly corresponding we've got this uh, arrangement. I'll just go back in and get rid of the transparency and I know what we'll do. We'll switch to um, a panoramic projection and then I'll, I'll just reset the camera so it's level and then we see the whole lot. So perspective, I'll move it into the middle, attributes, and just make it level and face north. Put it in the origin, which will be close to the origin of the sphere. Okay, and then we'll get to 360 degrees. So lighting from the inside provides a rough pattern of what the HDRI is but without any sharp transitions and it's the sharp transitions in the HDRI backdrop that the Trambians picks up that creates the problem because when the Trambians method does its light gathering it takes a point on the surface geometry and it looks outwards in a random way that could encompass the entire environment that that point on the surface can see. So if you imagine that the it's like looking through a very blurred lens from the surface of the geometry and the number of probes that it sends out are limited and if it looks at a very bright spot and brings that information back and then the next pixel along looks at a very dark spot and brings that information back because of the variance in the background th this is what generates the noise so what we can do right the next challenge is if we light from the inside it's going to start lighting everything else in the scene so I'll just introduce another object. Okay, here's our sphere. I'll put it in front of the camera and enlarge it. Now, we well, can light from the inside, but it, then it's going to light everything in the scene and that's going to interfere with, with what I want to do. What I want to do is light the inside of the light source with the, with the light probe and have that, through true ambience, go back into the scene and light the scene. But I don't want to have the light from inside lighting the other objects in the scene. It just wants to be lighting the light source that's going to generate the light. So it's a two-step process. Now, in the image-based lighting tab, we are fortunate to have this include-exclude feature. So what I could do is include just the sphere, the first sphere I created. So now I've included the first sphere, then if I move on to uh, premium effects, true ambience, and I'll choose uh, scattering correction and boost light just for this uh, rough guide. And we do this and we don't see anything at all. Because, ah, right, bearing in mind when you turn, uh, load a light probe, it automatically turns true ambience optimization on. So now we'll be lighting the inside of, inside of the sphere again. Uh, it's going to take a long time. Another consideration, we don't want to cast shadows. So that's going to speed our rendering up a bit. OK, I'll just render the bit that we'll want to look at. So, OK, you're getting the general idea here. The surface is being lit. It's not being lit very brightly by the, the background, but it is being lit. This you can see it's a sort of pinky colour there and a yellowy colour there. So that's theory. 
I don't need to worry about that anymore. We'll go back to our example. So I'm going to create a light source, edit it, Trambient optimized, use gel, include only the background, okay? Procedural, I'm just going to reset it. So this is going to put me in normal mode and you can see it's got diffuse value so it's ready to be lit by my light source. So I'll just check out of that and enlarge the light source so it's encompassing the entire environment. As a result of it being normal and not transparent it's going to cut out any um, effect fireflies picked up from the background. So I go into the Skylab now and what I want to do is turn shadow casting off, light from the inside, make sure we've disabled true ambience optimization and include only the light source. But here we've got a problem. Light sources don't appear on the include menu for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, we can select plain one, sphere one and background. What I'm going to do is select background because I've discovered that you can just change the name and it'll point at it. So if I type in background and it's got to have the same capitalization and exactly the same spelling then I can light the, the gel light from the light from inside and once again I'm back in a position where I've got a lot of light to play with. So just check our render options here. We've got 64 rays per pixel, maximum ray depth for TA scattering correction and boost light. So now go back in here and I can start dropping the amount of light being generated. So now we've dropped the amount of light and you can see we're, we're getting somewhere here. It's not as noisy as it was before and it's because of the, the general the general lighting effect of the light from inside, lighting the inside of the light light source. Just gotta balance the amount of light that I'm generating so that I can get the the, the effect. So it's not it's not quite as things were before. You've uh, you've got a bit more general lighting because the, the effect of lighting from inside produces quite a, a smooth distribution of, of light which is helping us with the noise but you have got some direction which is uh, which is what I was aiming for and also I've exposed a new way of lighting a scene which I think is quite interesting in itself okay uh, furthermore things I should point out right if I've added to the sky and make the sky white even though the sky is white and if we look at the sky I'll just uh, somewhere out there there's the windows we can't see them I make the sky black again we should see a window okay this is this is part of the high dynamic range nature of the the whole lighting process we've cut, we've topped out here we can't see the windows but because the reflection is not 100 percent it's only 15 we can pick the windows up in the reflection because the reflections obey the high dynamic range but uh, it's not very good at trying to light scenes with the reflected light because the reflected light is treated differently from the diffuse light. Other things we can do. Okay, right, I made another light probe and this one incorporates coloured lighting. So this is a situation where we've got red, green and blue, the green one being closest to the camera. So it's important to know, and bear in mind, I've got to turn to ambient optimization off so we can will light the inside of our light object. You see that's remained selected which is good. So but it also obeys the, the colour rules. Obviously the light source is not as bright as they were before so modify the light level output. And uh, you can see that we've got some lighting coming from the red, red side on this and a little bit of hint of blue there and a predominance of green. So it, it works for coloured light sources as well as for black and white ones. I mean, obviously, uh, more HDRI images are going to be used with coloured light sources. So, let's set things up with a bit more of an interesting uh, model. Then, so we'll get rid of this sphere, and I'll bring in uh, one of these wings-generated cubes. I'll use this one here. So, this is all the tutorials you can look at for making things like this in wings. I'll modify the material. I'm going to use uh, one of the Trepan Hall metals. Uh, it's available on the, on the website there so um, I'll use this one and uh, it's got 100% reflection I'm just going to 
lower that to 15 so it's got more diffuse response. So what's important thing is, is that it should be fairly easy to set the scenes up using this and you should also uh, you should also have reasonable render times and uh, as I say that one of the most important steps to make take is to make sure you're not casting shadows because you're only wanting to light from the inside the light source and that's uh, not really involved in the shadow casting and the other thing is that your light source being um, where we go background called background and the materials it should be normal mode and not transparent because it, it's that non-transparency that uh, allows it to um, to block off your HDRI backdrop and any noise that might be arriving as a result of that so there's just a couple of considerations there right I'm going to lower the diffuse value of the plane so I'm going to take that down to, uh, to 50 there because it's the material itself is uh, is not very bright and then and compensate for that by increasing the light levels so we've got reflection and lighting from these colored windows and uh, we're talking seven minutes at uh, 64 rays per pixel which is not too bad so let's uh, try it with a different backdrop then so I'm going to use one of the uh, not, a Trepan Hall backdrops I'll use the uh, a 1280 pixel diameter because we're only looking at it as a reflection I'll use rendering scene bearing in mind when you're rendering scene you can't actually see any true ambience uh, preview and uh, remember to turn off true ambience optimization I'll increase the intensity and remember to add it to the sky so we're getting some reflection on our model so that'll be so just provide some information on the geometry of the model and then uh, I'll have to have a look because I can't tell here what's happening in terms of the light coming back from the light source so obviously we're going to need more light output from this particular backdrop it's not as bright as the windows that I made so I'll turn the effect up to maximum see if we've passed the point where we'd need to go in this case not enough light however thankfully the image based lighting tab has a solution to this in intensity control we can apply to light source I'll just kill the specular for now because obviously that any specular generated is going to slow the rendering process down so we've only got um, 16 but I don't want I don't want additional uh, rendering and it's not going to be specular on this object because um, it's only including the sphere in the background so just to eliminate that just to be on the safe side likewise you can turn the quality up and that will slow the rendering process down but you won't actually gain anything because uh, when you're lighting from the inside it just if you want a general spread of light so increasing the amount of light sources is not really gonna um, it'll, it'll still be general you just do it with more light sources uh, I'm distracting myself here alright uh, if I apply to light source it'll apply a multiplier with the intensity to the effect so at this point I would be expecting to see a lot of light yeah, that's a lot of light right back here and then we'll drop it back down to we'll start at 10 and see if that's going to give us something like well that's not bad okay I'll try a little bit more we'll try 20 just double the light up okay right that looks like an appropriate level of light for lighting this object so I'm just going to um, bring the camera in a bit close it in so just just using the trambians effect right the uh, using an infinite plane as a backdrop means you get cut off at the horizon so next thing I'll do is I'll use edit and I'll convert this infinite plane into a cylinder so it'll just look like a flat disk and then if I move that over so his camera's looking this way I just want to cover this bit of the horizon up and that should if I can get this in the right position it's just a little bit of showing there right okay that should allow more of the backdrop to reflect off the object I think you can see that even on this uh, fairly crude preview which uh, helps with the the modeling effect altogether and then uh, what else do we want to consider oh yes this material itself because I'll check the material out it has a specular response we need a specular light source within this scene that will uh, that will do that now the TA 
light source that we're using here, that's called background now, so it can be picked up, is acting as a TA firewall, but it doesn't stop direct light coming into the scene. So if we go into the Skylab again, we can use the sunlight and we'll get rid of any diffuse from the sun and we can just use specular and that will trigger specular response in the material and give us some other anisotropic highlights on our model. At this point it might be looking altogether a bit too bright so I will <coughs> alter the output from the effect down a bit to compensate for that. You can see here we're just getting the reflection and the specular effect rather than the diffuse lighting effect so that's given us that. I might consider tweaking the... I'll, I'll take it down again and, and increase the reflection slightly I think yeah and uh, I think we're getting close now to a point where I want to try rendering it properly so I'm just uh, playing around with the settings now to, to create a nice balance for this object and I also should consider I've I'm still adding white into the background and so that will uh, reduce the uh, contrast with the HDR so it will give me a bit of a higher contrast background mm. and now it's looking a bit on the dark side again oops okay right I'll go back up to 15 that should be about it right okay so looking at the render time then it's saying a uh, quarter of an hour for this I'll just show you the results of to forgetting to turn the shadows off. So if we're casting shadows, even though it's the only lighting one thing and it's facing outwards, the render time will go up considerably. As you can see, this first pass hasn't even completed yet, so it's it's going to probably be uh, be an hour or more. So what's that? A, a four times increase in render time potentially and uh, it's not going to affect the appearance of the scene at all turning the cast ca shadows on and off was saying it's important to disable options they're not using in the render engine because the render engine doesn't know what you want oh look at that two and a half hours so that's that um, quarter of an hour so that's a ten times difference in the render time there just through turning the the cast shadows on and off so as I say it's, it's important to get rid of any other operations that uh, you're not using in order to optimize your render speeds and then you'll be able to use um, higher quality render options. So I'm just going to uh, change the document setup. I'll reduce it down to, oh, we'll go 600 by 600, make it a bit smaller and then go to the render options and set it up at 256 and then I'll render this out. That can be the uh, little preview image for the video and well it's taken about half an hour. So. Uh, I hope you found that interesting and uh, it'll encourage you to experiment with the um, more advanced rendering features and lighting options that are available to you in Bryce 7.1 Pro. And don't forget to check out the, the website for uh, more tutorials if you, if you liked this one. Okay, so I'll just pause the video there. As you can see, it's going to take about 30 minutes to render out, so that's your lot.